Today you see two neat tops made from the same pattern and the design features are super original. Beautiful sleeves right here with gorgeous pleats. Very, very interesting sewing, different to what you're used to, but not hard. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have two neat tops to share with you. I made one for in-betweenish weather and the other one more for colder weather. It just depends on your fabric choice. The pattern that I'm going to share could work for whatever you want. And it's brand new from Sinclair called Noon. As soon as I saw the lineup for this one, I was really hooked because the design was so different to other knit tops I've made. And it is designed for knit fabric. You can either make it a top, a longer top or a tunic. So there's length options there. I love little angles that you see here in the lineup. The sleeves are the main feature. They have pleats <laughs> they have them on the front and the back as you can see there so that is something that is common for all of the options the neckline is rounded and you have a higher and a lower neckline option that's finished with a neckband the fit is going to be exactly the same it's just that there's extra seams there that make the sewing construction a little different one of them you can see a front and a back yoke like this that finishes in a v that is the same for the front and the back and then on the other option the front and the back is just plain it's just one piece then you have these angles over here that go attached to the sleeve to finish off the hem you can also add a hem band and the sleeves can also have a cuff but those are all optional features for the tunic version which is the longest you have pockets there these are really easy to sew pockets have a curved entrance and they have the same features as a top I've already filmed and shown for you called the Linear Sweater from Sinclair Patterns. I distinctly remember sewing those pockets and they are the same technique. So if you like tunics and pockets, you can see how to sew it in this video. I'm not sewing pockets in my versions because I'm doing shorter ones. I'm not using hembands or cuffs. I just want everything nice and neat. It's rare that I do a hemband. It's very rare. I do occasionally, but if the option is there, I usually prefer to just hem regular, just, just simple. Because Noon is brand new at Sinclair Patterns, it's got a discount 18% off through the 29th of October. I think that falls on a Sunday. So there's quite a few days for you to have a look and get it for a little bit less. You'll find my affiliate link in the pinned comment down below. It's easy for you to find and also in the description box. You don't pay anything extra for using my affiliate link, but I do receive a small commission back. And that is one of the ways I make an income providing all this content here on YouTube. If you do like seeing visually what's going on, then you're gonna enjoy the content because I take really good care to have real up close footage so you can really, really see what's going on. The Noon is designed only for knit fabric, so please do not attempt to sew this in a woven fabric. And I sound a little bit repetitive, but I always say this because I know there's someone in the comment going to tell me, can I sew this with a rayon and this and that, and I'm just flat out saying no. This is a semi-fitted design. You will not fit into this if you sew in a woven. And even if you size up, you might have gaping necklines and it just won't fit. So don't even try it. <laughs> you need your knit fabric to stretch at least 30%, which is the minimum. And it has to be horizontal and vertical for you to be comfortable. I know a few people have made this one with knits that only stretch horizontally. And there is a warning about this. Whenever you do that, I think you need your fabric to stretch a lot more than recommended if it's only one way it's going. So I would want at least 50% stretch if it's only going to stretch one way and I would want the knit to have at least some give. But then be aware that the fit is not going to be the same. If you're sewing the yoke it might look shorter, your top in general might look shorter. When you move around and walk it might start riding up. You might feel uncomfortable here in this area of the sleeves. I don't know, I just don't want to risk it and I would not risk it for a garment that's semi-fitted. Find a nice one that stretches in every direction and you'll be much happier. It depends on the look that you're going for, whether you want the pleats to be super structured or you want your top to look a little flowier. You can use a variety of neat fabrics, so if you really want to highlight these pleats and make them stand out, the top would in essence be a little bit more voluminous than use maybe a lighter weight Ponte Roma, a Liverpool, a Conan Lycra. Some athletic knits can be a little bit more structured, same as some sweater knits, although if you want it to look a little flowier, there's also some sweater knits that are a little drapey and athletic knits that are a little bit drapey. There is a type of fabric that is mentioned as okay, but I really don't like the way it looks. Is rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, modal spandex. I think 
the pleats, everything looks really, really floppy. The design doesn't have enough ease for you to use fabrics like that, in my opinion. So unless you have a rayon spandex that is a little heavier, has a little bit more spandex, I would not recommend that type of clingy, very lightweight material. I think ITY would be okay. If you had a really nice stretch of velvet, it could be okay as well. For my choices, I chose a neat fabric. It's polyester spandex that looks like cotton embroidery and glaze, but it's not. It's just an embroidered neat, super pretty and navy. And for my colder climate version, I chose a blue sweater knit. You need a little bit of interfacing that doesn't stretch, that's fusible to stabilize shoulders and these little v-point corner areas so that you don't snip into your raw fabric so just have a little bit of that on hand for the sizing you know Sinclair patterns has height files you probably know what your height is if you haven't measured in a while do it again because sometimes that changes with age <laughs> just make sure you know what your height is then look at the petite regular or tall file then go ahead and choose based on your measurements and you have sizes from 0 to 30 up to a 63 inch hip as i said before this is a semi-fitted top it's not a top with a ton of ease so at the bust you have less than an inch of positive ease which is okay because with a knee it's going to feel like there's more ease than that when you wear it so that's fine <laughs> at the waist because it's straighter you have more space there and then at the hips it's only one inch so my measurements put me exactly at a size 16 for Sinclair patterns but knowing that I prefer a little more ease at the hips I don't like fitted things at the hips in general <laughs> I blend it to a size 18 just for personal preference just so I know I have a little bit more space at the hips not that my measurements require it it's just that my preference requires that Remember when you're sewing, you know what you like, you know how much ease you like, that is very personal and you can always make little tweaks to get the garment to fit exactly like you want it to fit. I've chosen the tall file as always with Sinclair patterns, it's very helpful for me because at 5 foot 8 I'm right there in the middle of the range. Zero fitting adjustments or personal fitting here. I've sewn this brand for so many years already, I know the block, I know the sizing, the way everything fits and especially using the height file for me is a really relaxing sew that I could just go ahead and just whip up and know that I'm gonna have a good result. So zero fitting adjustments. Of course, I have an up close and sew personal segment in this episode as always. We are using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That is what the pattern is drafted with. I'm using a mix of sewing machine and serger, especially the corners. You cannot do that only with the serger. So just be prepared to use both machines there. The technique is similar to when you're sewing a v-neck band or you're sewing a corner one of them you need to stay stitch and snip extend so you can sew in that little point piece the version that has the front and the back yoke only has two of these areas which is the v-point right there the other version that has just the one piece front and back there you have four of these little corners but they will be on each of these sides front and back but the technique will be exactly the same Having sewn both, I would say they both take around the same amount of time to sew. I don't really think one version is harder than the other. And I'm going to show you how to put together the pleats, how to sew all the little corners. It's way easier than you think. This is the option of the noon that has the front and the back yokes. These are the main pieces over here. They're on the fold. This is the back. That is the back yoke. You can see it's got a higher neckline over here compared to that other piece over there. Here's the front yoke on the fold and the front main piece on the fold. You can see that we're still going to have this angle right here, but it'll be easier to sew the sleeve because the sleeve is going to be sewn on first in this area before putting on the yoke. So the only little corners that we're going to have for this version are going to be the points over here on the front and the back. So in essence, I'm doing a higher neckline for this one because it's a sweater knit, it's gonna be for colder weather, so I don't want the neckline to be the lowest option. I'm also doing a regular hem. I'm not gonna do the hem band. I'm not gonna add cuffs at the bottom of the sleeves either. This is how the sleeve piece looks. This is the full length version. I'm gonna be just folding up the hem allowance. I'm not gonna be adding a cuff. You can also add a cuff if you want to. And there are several cut lines here for different lengths from elbow to three quarters to full length. And you can see it goes wider there. And that's because there are lots of pleats right there. Here you can see a half part of a sleeve. This is gonna be the center. I've just made the mark a little longer. That's gonna match the shoulder seam. And then there's a short line and a long line. This is one pleat. 
this is another pleat, another, another, another. There's five pleats on this side. And then when we look at the other half, it's going to be the same over here. Five pleats over there. I've marked this on the wrong side of the fabric. I don't like marking pleats from the right side of the fabric. All I'm going to do is make each pleat and baste it for about an inch. And I'm going to do that with all the pleats. Then I'm going to press them in the direction that they're going to go and baste along the top. This is the other version that I'm going to make. And this is the one that doesn't have the front and the back yokes. In this case, the front and the back are composed of just one piece, but it includes that angle. Now this angle would have had a seam like this if we were doing the yoke, which makes it easier to sew in the sleeve. In this case, when we sew the sleeve in this area, we're gonna have a corner right here to deal with. So for this version, you're gonna have four corners. For the other version, all you had was the little points over here. Otherwise, the fit is all the same. The only difference here is the seam lines. For this one, I'm doing a lower neckline and I have a neckband to match that. The sleeve for this one is exactly the same, it's just shorter at the three quarter length. The sleeve piece is quite large, there are a lot of pleats there, so this is obviously going to weigh down the shoulder seam. So I think you should stabilize it some way. Easy to fuse on a strip of interfacing here that doesn't stretch. It'll stay put and it'll keep the shoulders firm. There are other ways to do this, clear elastic, a piece of ribbon, something. You need to do something with these shoulders. <laughs> On this version that will have a yoke, you will just stabilize this small area, which is the back yoke. On this other version, we have an entire back piece here. This is an embroidered knit, so we do have little openings, but I'm just gonna try and ignore them. <laughs> In this version where we have a front and a back piece that is just one piece, we have these areas. And we also need a piece of interfacing on each corner to stabilize them because we are gonna be snipping into them later. I've got little squares of interfacing that I'm going to fuse on each corner here. I've got four because I have to repeat this same process with the front piece. After you've finished your garment, you might see these pieces of interfacing on the inside. So just make sure you find the color that doesn't disturb you too much. This is the front. You can tell because the neckline is lower. And I'm also going to put the little squares of interfacing here in the corners. For the version with the yoke, the front and the back pieces are going to have this shape. And this is the only area where we're going to snip into later. So I'm going to get two little strips here and just overlap them in the middle just so it's even more stable there in the center of this V. I'm doing this as an extra precaution because this is a sweater knit so I'm afraid of holes <laughs> later down the line so I'd rather just have a lot of stabilizing going on here. I don't mind if you see that on the inside I'd rather have my garment last and here on this other side I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to show you how the pleats come together. I'm going to show you what the instructions say first. So pretend this is the right side of the fabric and I've done my marks on the right side of the fabric as the instructions show. I never do that with my sewing I always mark on the wrong side. Starting from one edge you're going to have a long mark and a short mark. That's the short mark there. So what needs to happen is that short mark needs to come over towards the line over here. And all your pleat volume is going to come this way, away from the center. So that would be one pleat. Then you would take your next short line right there and bring it over to the long line. And that would be your second pleat. And so on and so forth. And you're going to end up with five pleats on each side. That would be the second pleat. And then you have three more. This is the mark from the middle. It's a little longer here. This would match the shoulder seam. And then from the other side, it's the same thing. Short line matches the long line over here. And that's one pleat. Then the short line matches the long line and so on. That's how you would do it. As per the instructions, once you have all your pleats in, you would baste along all the top and then you would have your sleeve. Now I find it easier to just sew the pleats with a basting stitch, remove those at the end, and I feel like I get a neater pleat like that. So I've marked mine on the wrong side, I still have the same marks, but in this case it doesn't matter which way comes to which way, it doesn't matter. All I'm going to do is join these, so one long little slash to one short one, and I'm going to pin them together, and then I'm going to do the next one and so on. So I prefer doing this. I go to the sewing machine and actually sew the pleat down for about an inch with a basting stitch. This is how one of my sleeves looks. You can see the pleats right there, five on each side. This is the mark that's gonna be in the center. I know the way I'm doing it is different and it's not necessarily the easiest or the fastest, but I stand by this. This is the way I do all of my pleats in every single garment. I don't like just folding them and pinning them in place. I'd rather sew them then fold them where they have to go and then baste and I find that they just come out so neat and I'm so happy at the end. So after I sew all of my pleats, of course this is from the wrong side, I'm going to press all of the volume of these pleats towards the center, towards this line over here 
that means that from the right side of the garment, all the volume is coming down the sleeve like that. I'm just gonna get these done. I've got four sleeves to do because I'm doing two tops. I'm just gonna batch process this whole thing and just get it over and done with. And I'm using a long stitch length here. This is just temporary. I'm gonna just pull these out after I've sewn the garment. I am using a jersey needle and a polyester thread here. And stitch length is about 4.5. Sewing each pleat down by about an inch is enough. You don't need more than that. Here we have one of the sleeves already sewn. I've done all the pleats. You can see that's the center line that will match the shoulder seam. Because I'm working from the wrong side to get the pleats to go to the correct way, I'm gonna fold them all into the center right here like that, so all coming into there towards that line. And because I want to base these in the direction of the pleats on this side, I'm gonna do it from the wrong side up and I'm just gonna hold them in place right there. But then to do the other side, I'm gonna do it from the right side because I never wanna be sewing against them. The press of foot would catch them and you might get puckers, so it can get quite messy. So I'm gonna be basting these in two stages. I don't really need to put any pins right here. That's the beauty of sewing the pleats instead of using pins. You know, you can just baste them there and they will turn out very neat. This pattern in the end is gonna use a very small seam allowance, only a quarter of an inch. So I'm trying to baste very much on the edge here. Okay, pleats basted in place. And now we have a sleeve that's ready to be used and sewn into the other pieces of the pattern. I'm batch doing these. I've got three more sleeves to do exactly the same thing. <laughs> now we're starting to put this one together. I've got all the pieces right sides up. One side's gonna be the front, one side's gonna be the back. I've got the sleeves in the middle. Don't worry about the sleeves because they are symmetrical. The pieces actually are all symmetrical. So you don't find a notch that says the front of the sleeve or the back of the sleeve. It's just a relaxed style like that and the pleats allow that symmetry to be there in the sleeve. Over here on this slanted edge, we're gonna be matching this edge of the sleeve here. I'm gonna show you that up closer. And we're gonna have four seams to sew right there and right there, and that will unite the part, the top part of the sleeve to the body. And then this little diamond shape that you see right there, that is gonna be filled in later with the yoke pieces. So what we're sewing together now are these pieces. You can see that the sleeve has a little shape like that going in and there's a little dot that's gonna match here and that's gonna match there. This is the rest of the sleeve. This is sort of like sewing the sleeve in on the flat. This is going to be sewn later, involving the side seam and this part of the sleeve. But for now, we're just joining this point and that point in four places. This is a sweater knit. That means the jersey is loosely woven compared to other types of knits that are firmer, like cotton. Even the other jersey that I'm using has a firmer weave. So my practice is to sew seams with a sewing machine, narrow zigzag to allow stretch and then surge. It just makes it feel safer for me that later down the line, I'm not gonna end up with a hole in my sweater. That's just my personal preference for sewing these. So that's why you see me sewing these short seams with a quarter of an inch, which is what the pattern uses with a narrow zigzag and then I'll go over and clean the seams with the serger afterwards. To make my life a little bit more relaxed, I'm using my quarter inch presser foot, which makes it so relaxing and very accurate. I'm also letting the feed dogs do their thing. I'm just holding the fabric. I'm not stretching it or pulling it. It's a neat and I don't wanna end up with wavy seams. What I've got here is the front yoke and the back yoke already sewn. I've done that off camera. I've sewn the shoulder seams. You can see the stabilized area. I press that seam towards the back and I have already added my neckband. Because this sweater knit has less recovery than other fabrics, I cut my neckband shorter. So I measured this and then just recalculated it to be 80% of the circumference. The original neckband was a little bit longer, which would be okay for cotton lycra or some other type of fabric, but for sweater knits, I know they can stretch out, so I just made it a little shorter and it's perfectly fine. Now here is the big piece on the table. All the seams are sewn and we have this shape in the center that's missing something. And it's this that's missing in here. Now, remember the sleeves have a middle mark there that will match the shoulder seams right there and then this point needs to be sewn in there. What I've done on these two areas is draw a dot where I need to snip into. It's just easier to see it if it's there and then I've stay stitched at a quarter of an inch, just a straight stitch with a shorter stitch length just to stabilize that area. And I like to just snip into this so I'm just gonna cut into the close, close to the V but not right through it so this can extend like this. On my yoke piece, I've also got a little dot there. So all I'm gonna do is place this behind it, match up the dots, start with this dot. This allows this to extend right here. 
For this area, I am going to use a straight stitch and I'm going to sew right on top of where I did the stay stitching, so that will be my guide. And over here, I'll make sure I don't get a pucker of fabric right there. Right there is my yellow dot. I can see now I'm, I can lift this and move all the fabric out of the way. My next stitch will be hand cranked to make sure it's clean. And then I'll finish up to there. There it is. You can see it's clean there. There's no pleat or pucker that formed. That's how it looks on this side. And when we look at it from the right side, we're going to have this nice little V right there. Very neat. This is all going to be surged later. You're going to see a little bit of the interfacing, but I don't mind that. So I'm going to repeat the process on the other V and then start sewing all the rest that's still loose. Here we have one of the points. I just kept pinning up, pinning up, pinning up, getting to the sleeve area. Here we have the mark from the sleeves that matches the shoulder. And now I've got this section to pin from this point over here to this shoulder there. I've got the rest pinned. Once I've finished pinning it, then I'm going to sew the bits that are missing. I've got this partially sewn at the points, at the V points on the front and the back. I've got to join everything and I'll be using my quarter inch presser foot there. I'm sewing half of this area and then I'll just repeat the same on the other side. When I'm sewing with the pleats going against me, I'm using my seam ripper just to help push that volume underneath there to get a smooth finish. After getting all of these seams sewn, I've been to the iron, I've pressed it all. You can see the V-shape there, the pleats. And now it's just like you would have sewn the sleeve on the flat because now we sew the seam of the sleeve, including the side seam there. So I'm, I basically feel like I'm done because after I do that seam, I just need to do some hems for the sleeves and the bottom. Even though this version has a full front and back piece, has more corners to sew in, I think it would take less time than the other version that had the yoke over here. It's really easy. So we have the shoulders here, and then this shape that comes out, that corner there, those are the corners that have been stabilized. Now we get our sleeve and you can see where it's going to fit into here. <laughs> Basically, we're gonna do the corner sewing technique right here and then that will go sewn up to there. We're basically gonna have a seam that goes there involving a corner, sewing the top of the sleeve with all the pleats, the mark matching the shoulder, another corner and then there. And then we would sew in the sleeve and the side as a last step. Here we can see one of the corners, the little dot. I've also stay stitched that area there at a quarter of an inch seam allowance as a guide. I'm gonna snip into that corner and I'm gonna sew it the same way you saw me sew the other little V points. It's exactly the same technique. This snipping will allow this to extend. Here is the dot over here that I'm gonna place behind. Get the corner sewn here, get it on the other side. You've already seen me do that. Here is one of the corners sewn. So I have pinned the rest of the fabric. This is gonna be the sleeve and the side seam later. And then we have the corner into the top part of the sleeve that has all the pleats over here. Here is the shoulder seam. This is the mark that will match that shoulder seam. We keep going and we have the other corner here and then this other little short seam over here. Remember, in these corners I've sewn about an inch both ways. So I'll be sewing up to there, starting again, going on like that, and that'll finish half of it. Here it'll be sewn in separate stages. You've just seen me sew this. I've got one half of the top done. You can see there's a seam right there, the corner, the top, the corner, and another seam there. It's like sewing a little rectangle in there.
So now just repeat the same process over there on the other side. Once that's done, I'll be able to just do this and then finish sewing the seam of the sleeve with the side seam and the hem. This one has the second option, which just has a plain front and back, no yoke piece. That means that we do get that little corner right here. Here we have the corner right there. It's very hard to see with this fabric. That's why I didn't want to feel much of the sewing construction because it's so hard to see. But in real life, you can see this shape coming right there. And it's the same on the back right here. Corner, corner. So four corners here. For this one, I have a three quarter length sleeve with a regular hem as well and a regular hem at the bottom. I really like this one. I love this type of fabric. It's just so different and so special. But when I have a solid, has some texture and something in there that's special, I really enjoy it as well. And this is a lovely, lovely, lovely top. I know I'm going to really love it for in between weather. So let's see it on. This is my navy noon top. It's an embroidered knit that looks like broderie anglaise, but it's not. I've got a three quarter length version. I don't have hem bands or cuffs. I've hemmed normally. I've used the shortest length available here, size 16. Blended out to an 18 at the hips just because I wanted a little bit more ease there. And this is a version that has the solid front and back, meaning there's no extra yoke piece at the front still got the beautiful pleated sleeves and i've got it paired with one of my sky skirts also from sinclair patterns love the look a little bit of pink just to liven it up a bit very casual here and very comfortable the original design has about one inch of ease at the hips so with blending to a larger size now i have about two which i think is the bare minimum I want for my personal preference. So I'm really happy I went out one size at the hips just to have a bit more space here. Here's a look up higher. I really like the depth of this neckline. It's not too low, it's not too high. I think it's perfect. This is the lower neckline option. So don't worry, it will never be too low. <laughs> Here's where you can see the details are closer. You can see all the holes in my embroidery. I think the shoulder fit is good. You can see that's where the sleeve starts, right at my shoulder actually. So it's not dropped or oversized. This is the lower neckline option here. I really like it. The pleats are beautiful. And here is where we get this angle right here. That's where the yoke would be different there and it would make it have one less corner because you have a corner here and a corner there with this option and the same at the back very comfortable i really really enjoy putting all of this together that's how the back pleat look i thoroughly enjoyed the sewing process here it was different the design is unique i'm very happy i have this top i know in navy it's going to be a staple for me i'm going to really enjoy wearing this one for a long time to come I've got my navy noon top with my Lennox skirt. This is a maxi skirt, part of a dress from I Love Notions pattern. I love it in blue, I love that slit. I love different tones of blue, bright blue with a navy, I think looks amazing. And I've got some really nice walkable sandals with a silk scarf and I'm set to go. I love this look. I'm gonna fold up these sleeves. I think I will end up chopping them off above the elbow just so I have an option for when it's really, really hot as well. I'm realizing this now that I'm outside and it's really, really hot. <laughs> Here's my navy blue top with my print poppy pants. These poppy pants, poppy pants have a navy background with a tropical print on top. It's a more subdued tropical print, the colors aren't too bright. And I can only really pair this with navy tops, different styles, so I'm glad I have another alternative here and I really love how this looks together. This is the version that you saw in the tutorial. It's a lovely shade of blue. I've been hoarding this one for a while. It's so lovely. Light to medium weight sweater knit. It's the perfect fabric for this design because it's not excessively drapey or super structured either. I think it's in the middle and it really does highlight the pleats beautifully. I never regret taking the time to sew the pleats, basting them and then removing them because they just turn out so much neater. Whenever I've tried to just pin and fold a pleat they tend to move and not end up exactly the way they were supposed to and I know like 99% of pattern designers tell you to fold the pleats it is a valid technique and have done that but over the years I've just decided to sew my pleats baste them and then remove the basting stitches at the end and I'm always really happy so that's how I do it and I mark it on the wrong side 
This is my neck band right here. I adjusted my neck band to be 80% here instead of 85 just because I know that sweater needs can stretch out a little bit more. Here's my regular sleeve with a regular hem done with the twin needle. Nothing exciting over here or at the hem at the bottom. <laughs> and then this is where it gets super interesting. You know, you still have this shape, this angle right here, but because you've sewn the sleeve onto this one first, there's no corner or little angle that you need to deal with because it's covered when you sew that seam in later. So the only points you have to worry about are these, this one right there and this one right there easy to do you saw it wasn't complicated and in there we have a bit of interfacing that no one's gonna see because it's on the inside but I'm very confident that it's gonna stay fused on there and give me some stability in that area because I know sweater knits are loosely woven compared to other jerseys that's why I decided that for this version I wanted the option with less corners than the version with more corners just because of the fabric choice basically and i'm really happy i think the solid really shows off the features it's so nice <laughs> i really really love it let's see it styled a few ways this is my second noon top this one is the same size and fit as the other one it's just a different option this one has a v yoke in the front and the back that you'll see up closer this has full length sleeves I've also hemmed them in the same way, it's the same size 16 blended to 18 at the hips. I've got the same sky skirt you saw earlier with my other version, some booties, a little scarf, a little bag, you know, it's very me. I love the combination of different tones of blue, I think the navy with this tone of blue is gorgeous. Up closer you can see the ease at the hips. I think sweater knits always tend to stretch out a little bit more than other knit fabrics, they are just loosely woven so that is why this one might look a little looser than the other one even though I made the exact same size and it's all the same. Move the scarf out of the way so you can see the details. So it's the same pleats, same nice shoulder fit. The fabric shows off the pleats beautifully. We still get this angle right here but it's composed of this different seam here which finishes in a V over there. So that is the front yoke. I don't know if you can see it as well at the back with my hair, but it's the same design at the back. I have the regular height, so this is a little higher than the other version you saw. It's finished with a neck band as well right there. I'm gonna really enjoy this look when I get to wear it out in real life. <laughs> I love making designs that are not conventionally for sweater knits with sweater knits because I get the best sweaters and don't just think that sweaters have to be basic, they can be beautiful like this and this pattern is perfect. You can have a smashing sweater, very beautiful. I love this blue, it feels so soft on and I'm going to really enjoy it when it gets cooler. Here's another look in a blue explosion. These blues are different tones but that doesn't matter, I think they go beautiful together. This is a Lenex skirt I made using the Lenex dress. I just made it separately into a skirt. This is a pattern from Love Notions and it's an athletic knit. I love the blue. I think they go together really well. I like using maxi skirts with boots and I've got a scarf with a blue print in there just to give it a little bit of life and I love the way this looks. I have my sweater knit noon paired with my metro pull-up jeans it's also a pattern from Sinclair patterns very comfy pull-up stretch jeans this is a lighter wash and I think it pairs beautifully with this tone of blue a very casual look with sneakers and a bag of course I had to bring a little print scarf there to give this outfit a bit of me I feel like if I dress in solids I do need a little print somewhere and it usually comes in the form of a scarf I have a billion of these I love them because I feel it always gives that extra touch it's gonna make me really happy with the look in the end I sewed both of them in the same day I took my time during the morning to sew this one and film it and then during the afternoon I filmed the other one. It didn't feel exhausting or overwhelming because I was enjoying it so much. I love sewing things that are different, you know, this is not the typical knit garment where you sew shoulder seams, side seams and a sleeve, you know, it's a little different and I really enjoyed it. I take my hat off to Oksana who owns and designs at Sinclair, she comes up with these super fun sews 
that look so so unique and they always feel amazing so love them love them so much they're so cute <laughs> i think you will enjoy sewing both versions remember with a print you're not going to really see some of the details so if i was using a print where it's pretty busy I would just probably do the yoke version and not the one with the four corners because it might just take you a longer time to do the four corners and then no one's ever going to see them because you have a really busy print. I really opted for solids this time. I know I would not like to make this in a stripe because of all this distortion that the stripe would create with all the, the type of design lines and the pleats. Although you could do that if you wanted. I also didn't want to do color blocking. I just kept it really simple and I'm really happy with my choices. I think when a design has features like this that are super impactful, keeping it simple with the color and the type of fabric sometimes just makes me want to wear it more than if I just go overboard and just do a huge print with the design that's got the pleats. You know, I think it might be too much. But that's all personal styling and these were my choices and I'm very happy. Don't forget to check out the Noon Top Sinclair. I really enjoyed it. I always recommend Sinclair patterns. Really great patterns, great drafting, great instructions so you have a really good experience. Don't forget to use my affiliate link and it's discounted till 29th of October. That's all from me. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you back next week with more sewing content. Bye!